we have now come to the point where we're finishing up fractions and just going to tidy up with some little tricks and things here. Um, today's lesson is on cross-canceling, the technique that you can choose to use for multiplying, and also using bed mass with fractions. First, let's hit up cross-canceling. Here's how it works. We have this multiplication uh, question here with fractions. You could do this the old-fashioned way, which is 2 times 3, which is 6, and then the denominator, 3 times 5, which is 15, and you'd have an answer, um, but then you'd have to reduce that. Uh, you'd have to realize that 6 and 15 um, have 3 that go into them. 3 goes in there twice, 3 goes in there 5 times, so you could get 2 fifths. Nothing new, you knew that from before. I'm going to show you a trick that will help you save a step or two or three um, later on. It's called cross cancelling. Just like how we reduce this, uh, the 6 and 15 going up down, in a multiplication question we can do the exact same thing, not just up down, but across. And this only works for multiplying questions. So first I should check to reduce. Can, they, can I reduce up down? Well, two-thirds, no, that's already reduced. Three-fifths, no, that's already reduced. I can also check if I can reduce across. And look what I see, three and three. I know that three goes into both threes, obviously. Three goes into there once, and three goes into there once. Two and five, they do not reduce, so that's as low as I'm going to go. So now, I've got smaller numbers, and I can use them. Two times one is two. 5 times, sorry, 1 times 5 is 5. I got the answer in one step. Now some of you might be thinking, I uh, don't like this. Um, the other method was pretty quick. Alright, let's give it another chance. Um, this question here, uh, the old-fashioned way, you just go 5 times 2 is 10, 6 times 3 is 18, you get 10 over 18, you have to reduce. Let's try the cross-canceling way. Let's see if we can reduce up-down or cancel up down. No, nope. 5 and 6, nothing goes into them. 2 and 3, nothing goes into them. How about crossing, crisscrossing? 6 and 2, is there a number that goes into both 6 and 2? Yes, 2 does. 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there 3 times. 5 and 3, nothing goes into them, so we just leave them alone. And we're left with 5 times 1, which is 5, and 3 times 3, which is 9, and you're done. The key advantage to this method is like you don't have to really reduce at the end. You're kind of reducing at the start, so you don't have to reduce at the end. And a lot of mistakes people make are forgetting to reduce. So it kind of takes care of that problem for you. Now, if you still haven't bought into this cross canceling method, then I'd like you to try this question by yourself on your own using your old way of doing it. 4 times 15, it'll take a, an hour to get that answer. And then 5 times 22, that'll be another hour to get your answer. Then you'll have to reduce it, and it's just going to be chaos. With the cross-canceling way, you can get your answer simplified in a, in a lot fewer steps with a lot less grief. Up-down, you can hardly ever cancel up-down uh, on the question, but crisscrossing usually you can. 5 and 15. Um, 5 goes into there, yep, once. 5 goes into here three times. What about the 4 and 22? Uh, 2 goes into there. 2 goes into there twice. 2 goes into here 11 times. So what are you left with? 2 times 3, which is 6. 1 times 11, which is 11. And you're done. That big ugly question has just been now reduced down to 6 over 11. Over here. It works, again, for any multiplying question. Um, you convert this first to a improper fraction. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8 over 5. Remember with whole numbers, the way you change a whole number into a fraction is make it over 1. So 5 is a fraction, be 5 over 1. And now? That, that's easy. The fives will cancel out. You get one and one. And what are you left with? Just eight over one, which is that that technically is improper. So you should write this as just eight. OK, 
Okay. Again, if you don't like this method, you can always go back to your old way of doing it, but for a question like that or uglier questions, this method does work best. Okay, now I said it only works for, mu uh, for multiplying questions, but remember, and here we have a dividing question, but remember, what is dividing really? Well, in the dividing question, what are you doing? You do leave the first one. First, we got to keep change this into an improper. That becomes 3 over 2. And let's convert this. 4 times 2 plus 1, 9, oops, 9 over 4. Remember, dividing questions are actually multiplying questions. You keep the first, change this to a multiply, and flip. And when we flip it, we can realize that 2 and 4 go into each other. 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there twice. 3 and 9, 3 goes into both numbers. 3 goes in there once, 3 goes in there three times. What are you left with? 1 times 2, 3 times 1, 3. Final answer is 2 thirds. And it's already, almost always, it's always reduced. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, so that's cross cancelling. Um, hopefully, eventually, you'll buy into it. Um, on to the next part bed mass. Bed mass with fractions. You've been adding and then a multiplying. Bed mass, do the multiplying first before the adding. So we do this first. Two, now, here actually, we can do cross cancelling. Uh, 2 and 4, 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there twice, 1 times 1 is 1, 6 times 2 is 12, you get 1 12th. Now, just like we did before the bed mass, bring down the plus and the 1 third, 1 third plus 1 12th, we need a common denominator, that would be 12, this one already is 12, so we'll just leave it as 1 12th. What do we do to 3 to make it 12? Times by 4, do the same to the top. 1 times 4 is 4. And remember, add the tops, leave the bottom, you get 5 twelfths. Over here, um, there's nothing in between this 3 fifths and this bracket, so that's a multiplying question. And here we have brackets. We do the brackets first. We do this first. Four, 1 fourth plus 1 half. Common denominator between 1 fourth and 1 half is 4. 1 fourth is already good. How do we make how do we make this 2 into a 4? We times it by 2, do the same to the top. 1 times 2 is 2. Add these up. 3 over 4. Please do not cross cancel here. Why can we not cross cancel here? Because it's adding. Cross canceling only works when you're multiplying like it was there, like it was up there and all over the place. You cannot cross cancel when you're adding or subtracting. Um, so that's what you get here. That was all in brackets. And then we bring down the three-fifths. Three-fifths, bracket, three-fourths. There's nothing in between, so that means you multiply. Check to cross-cancel. Three and five are already good. The three and four are already as low as you can go. Nothing goes into them, so you can't really cross-cancel here. Just do it. Three times three is nine. Five times four is twenty. How about this? Ooh, an exponent. Fractions with exponents. Bed mass. Well, we first would do what's in the brackets. The brackets is uh, this question we got to add. Common denominator we need between 4 and 3, which is 12. We're adding. How do we turn the 4 into 12? Times by 3. Do the same to the top. 3 times 1, 3. How do we turn a 3 into a 12? 3 times by 4. Do the same to the top. 1 times 4 is 4. Add the tops. Leave the bottom. We get 7 twelfths. Not done yet, though. There is brackets around this, and it was squared. So we got to put that around the answer. Brackets around it, and it's squared. Now what? Well, there's two options. The one option is to realize that 7 twelfths squared, just like anything squared, is that thing times itself. So you can go 7 over 12 times 7 over 12. It's to the power 2. Times itself 2 times. And what is 7 times 7? 7 times 7 is 49. 12 times 12 is 144. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it would be 
the top and the bottom is squared. So you could treat this as 7 squared, which is 49, over 12 squared, which is 144. Either way, um, as long as you get that answer. Okay, so hopefully that'll come in handy. And um, for, just zoom out here a little bit, for these skill testing questions, the first two, I'd like you to use cross-canceling. Pretty please. Um, actually, I'll be looking for it. So um, I'll be, when you show it to me, I, I want to see the cross-canceling steps of this and of that. Um, and the bed mass question here. So those are your three skill testing questions. One last little question for you. After this assignment is a review, uh, and after that is the test. You have finished after this assignment the fractions unit, and you're good to go. You're ready for a test. Good luck on that when you get there. Talk to you.